Welcome to part two, and we're discussing recruitment and screening of clinical trial participants. So in part two of our crash course video, as well as individually available video, let's discuss how you are supposed to actually screen for your patients, what is an inclusion exclusion criteria, and how to successfully recruit a participant. So if you're a clinical trials assistant, clinical trial coordinator, it's really important that you spend a lot of time reading the protocol that was given to you by the pharma sponsors. Just really, I've gone through my protocol, which is 300 pages long, at least three to four times. Then make notes on the inclusion and exclusion criteria. If needed, make little handouts of it because inclusion and exclusion criteria is the very basis of which you're going to screen your patients. Now have a clear understanding of the population. There might be some secret strategies you can use to make this screening process simpler. Your hospital or your clinic might have hundreds of patients passing through it every single day, but maybe you don't have to go through all of them. By understanding your inclusion criteria, maybe you know that your population only needs to have a certain age group. So you might be able to use your hospital's EMR system, your electronic medical record or electronic health record system to narrow it down by age. Alternately, you might be able to just partner with a particular physician and look at their patients. For example, the drug of interest could be something to do with hypertension. In that case, you've partnered with a cardiologist and you're working closely with the nurse or that cardiologist themselves to understand, okay, what criteria do these patients need to have and are they meeting them? Maybe on the basis of sex, age, prior heart conditions, prior hypertension, how long they have had hypertension, if they have any other comorbidities or not, you can really narrow down this process. Now, a lot of the times pharma sponsors might ask you to track your screening, in which case you can create an easy tool using Microsoft Excel or use whatever format that they actually are giving you, maybe in the form of a little table, paper or some online system. And you can actually assign a little code number to each patient that you are screening. Now, when you say you are screening, you will start off with your largest population, which may be every patient who has gone through a cardio clinic. Then you're going to narrow it down on the basis of age and scratch out people who don't meet the minimum and maximum age requirements by saying, you know, failed screening due to maximum age, failed screening due to minimum age. Later on, you can actually show the people who survived these two screening, they had comorbidity is an exclusion criteria. So maybe that person already has stage four heart failure or they have like two or three different organs are in dysfunction. So they actually don't qualify for your clinical trial. In those cases, you would also screen them out. And so on, going forth with your inclusion and exclusion criteria. First, you use all the inclusion criteria, and then on the basis of exclusion criteria, you remove the patients, and whoever you have left, you really want to spend some time going through their patient charts, either in your physical charts or in your electronic record system, and make sure if this is the right patient to approach. Because once you approach them, that takes a lot of time. So if there's any reason to screen them out, it's good to do that bit of research early on. Now, once you've met the patients, you will have your previously pre-approved information consent forms. You will have maybe a verbal script, some ICF in the language of the patient, and this would have been approved by both the pharma sponsor as well as the ethics department at your site. Now you will approach the patient at a time, you know, with permission from the physician, with permission from the nurse, maybe the person in the circle of care, which is, you know, the doctor and the nurse or the clinic people should tell them, hi, there is somebody who is here who would like to speak to you about some research we have. Are you interested? It's best actually if the physician themselves mention it during their consultation, then the patient is kind of mentally prepared to meet with you. Then as a clinical trial coordinator or a clinical trials assistant, you go in and you introduce yourself. You say, hello, my name is this. This is the study we're working on. Uh, so we basically give them a little summary of what the drug is, why they have qualified for it. They, are, they have the full right to say no. They have the full right to say yes and proceed. Give them the document. Give them some time to think over it. It could be a, an hour at the clinic. They can maybe take it home and you can give them a call later to follow up and ask what they think. They also, you know, it's important to make sure it's fully informed. All of their questions are answered. If they want to meet with the physician, they have a right to do so to ask more clinical and medically relevant questions. They have a full right to know 
you know, the procedure, how long it's going to last, the logistics of the situation, and then they can decide whether they want to say yes or no. So be very aware of the rights of patients in your country, in your city, in your state, in your, you know, institution, like they can back out at any time, you know, they can, if they have complaints against the study, they can go to XYZ ethics board and what the study is going to be like for them is it going to take up time is it going to take up money because they have to keep coming and going back and forth things like that and once you've done that you know if they say yes you get their signature make sure there are people who are able to consent for themselves some people like maybe people with advanced dementia or you know some other significant malignancies may not be in a condition to make decisions for themselves in which case you might need a substitute decision maker on their behalf so just double check all of these little details and get your consent give them a copy of the consent make sure they're fully comfortable with their decision and then you have your first patient recruit so this is the process of screening and recruiting a patient in a clinical trial it can look a lot of different ways you might be doing it all electronically and over the phone, depends on the ethics, depends on the protocol. You might be seeing them for a few visits before they actually make this major decision. Or it might even be time sensitive in certain clinical trials, which are like very trauma focused or critical care focused. They might be like, okay, you had this major injury at this time, we have 24 hours to give you this drug. Take two hours to think about it, read through this, discuss with your life partner or discuss with your next of kin and then make that decision and we'll talk some more. Always, even if you are in a time constraint, it's important to like let your patient feel that their voice is still being heard. It's still their decision. You are a patient advocate first and then you are an employee of the, you know, of this trial. So it shouldn't be motivated by revenue. It shouldn't be motivated by pleasing your supervisor. It should really be, okay, this is a patient. They qualify for this. I want to make sure they know their option. I want to, you know, not sell the trial, but show these are the pros. These are the cons. This is something you can consider. Um, we don't know if you'll be getting the placebo. We don't know if you'll be getting the real drug. But if you do, you know, this is a shot. And if at any time you're experiencing these side effects, you have the right to leave the trial at any time. If any time we find out, you know, various other sites have had major side effects, which can be debilitating and you're having them, we will inform you. If, you know, it is in, in fact, you got a placebo and the trial ends and we know the drug was highly successful, then we will come and offer you the drug as well. So just make sure everybody's like really aware you've gone through the form multiple times because a lot of the times whatever is written on an ICF might not be super easy to understand for a general person who's not from a clinical background and there you have your screening and randomization sorry screening and <laughs> recruitment